Hey everyone, welcome to another video. In this one, we're gonna be showing how you can integrate Stripe payments into a Django project. And you can follow along using the Django Stripe GitHub repository. Link is in the description down below. And there's this starter files branch that you can use to follow along with the starting code. And so just clone this repository, check out the starter files branch and you can go from there. And the finished code you'll find here on the master branch. So what I've done is I've cloned the repository, I've got it open in VS Code, I've created a virtual environment, activated it, and installed the dependencies. We're using the latest version of Django as of the time of this recording. And that's it, nothing else is really installed. I can go and run the server. And you should be able to see it run. And here it is, right? So a blank Django project that we can use going forward. And so if you're new here, please subscribe to the channel and like this video. It does help push this video to other people and propagate this through the YouTube algorithm, which in turn lets me make more content like this for you for free. So please do show your support for the channel. And other than that, I do want to let you know that there's a new course that I've added to the learn.justjango.com site which is where we build a Gumroad clone. If you've never heard of Gumroad before, Gumroad is a place where you can basically create a digital product and you can sell that product and get paid. So it's like a marketplace for creators. And it's very popular for selling things like eBooks and Notion templates and Airtable databases and just digital products. And so we go and build a clone of this in the sense that you can create a product you can sell that product and get paid. So we use Stripe Payments and we use Stripe Connect to actually handle the payouts to the different creators on the site. So do check out learn.justjango.com if you want to follow along with that course. And other than that, let's get started with the video. So to follow along, you're gonna need to have a Stripe account. Once you're logged in, you can then go to view your test data and you can go to developers and then API keys. It's important because you're gonna need API keys to follow along and to actually make use of Stripe payments. So here you'll find if you have already, otherwise you're just gonna to need to create some API keys. But if you do have them, make sure you copy your published key or publishable key and your secret key. You're gonna need both of those. And I've just gonna put them in a .env file for now, but we're not gonna make use of the .env file. We're gonna go into our settings.py and all the way down at the bottom, we're gonna create some variables that are gonna store those values. So you're gonna have your Stripe public key, which is just gonna be blank for now. You're gonna have your Stripe secret key, and you're going to have a Stripe webhook secret as well, which we'll get to in a second. But for now, we're just gonna make sure that we have Stripe public key and Stripe secret key. So once you have those values, go and fill them in over here and we can then actually start building out a very basic application to handle Stripe payments. So one example of a digital product that you can sell is if you go to just Django.com and you go to the Django tutorial hub, the tutorial hub is an Airtable database. So you purchase access to this database and once you purchase access to it, you get an email with the URL to the database. So it's kind of like a secret URL and that's just one way that you can distribute access to the product. And it's really, really simple because all we're doing is just handling the payment. We wait for a webhook from Stripe, which is basically an event telling us that the payment was successful. And based on that event, we can then send the user an email telling them that here's the URL to what you paid for. And so this is really the simplest example of how to implement Stripe payments. It's a landing page. And once you click on grabbing the lifetime deal or any of these purchase buttons, it then takes you into the process on Stripe checkout, which is one of the tools you can use to handle payments. So you can see this is Stripe checkout. And once you then go through the checkout process, you'll then get access to the product. So we're gonna build something very similar to this where it's literally just a landing page of a product you're trying to sell. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a model to represent this product, which is basically going to be called a product, the product model. And it's gonna represent whatever the product is you want to sell. 
In my case, it could have been the Django Tutorial Hub. In your case, it might be a Notion template or even an ebook. Maybe you want to send an email with an attachment, which is an ebook. It could be literally anything, even just a file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an app to handle this. So I'm going to run manage.py start app. And I'm just going to call it, let's say, products. All right. So if we bring this up here, here's our products app. And we just need to register that in the settings. So we'll just come over here and we're going to add products. All right. So once you have that there, you can then go into the products app into models.py. And here we're going to create a product model. So it's going to inherit from Django's model. And first we're going to give it a name, which we can say is a character field with a maximum length of, let's do 100 characters. And we can do the string method, which is basically just going to return self.name. All right, this is our basic product. If we think about what a product has or what the properties of a product are, it has a price, it might have some details about it, a description, but all of those semantics about the product can be handled in the landing page itself. So you can basically build a template, the landing page, and just style it to look like whatever you want it to look like and to market the product. But the actual data that we need to store on the product here is really just the name, maybe some very specific information that is required by Stripe. But most importantly, we need to store the price. So I'm gonna have the price on here and I'm gonna store it as an integer field. And why I'm doing this is because I'm going to store the value in cents. So meaning if the product costs $10, we're going to store a thousand in here because $10 is a thousand cents. And this is just good because Stripe's API takes the price in cents. So if you're storing it in cents, it's going to help when you deal with the API, but also when you have to do calculations, then you can just add prices or multiply them purely with the cents value and then create a display value that converts it from cents into dollars. There are some opinions as to why it's better to do it like this, but it's really up to you. If you want to use a decimal field or you want to use like a float field, that's fine. I just prefer an integer field. So just make sure you do the calculation correctly, but I'm going to store a default value of zero. And this is already enough for us to work with the product and actually start with Stripe. So what I'm going to do is just register it here in the admin. So from the models, import product, and we're going to register the product model. Okay. So that's that we can then run manage.py, make migrations and then migrate. All right. So that's our first migration and I'll then go and run the server as well. And actually, before we do that, I'm just going to create a super user as well. So create a super user, right? Now we can go and run the server and we can also go and open up the Stripe docs. So what you want to do is go to stripe.com slash docs. All right. The Stripe documentation gets updated all the time. So unfortunately, if you're watching this in a couple of months or a year from now, maybe most likely the Stripe documentation is updated, but don't be intimidated by it the general structure and products that are provided by Stripe don't change that much. So you just have to know where to look. And so what you're going to do is you're going to go to either all products, if you want to see all of the products and you can then navigate from there. And in our case, we want to deal with payments. So we're just going to go to payments, online payments, or you can just click to go straight to payments there either way. So there's different kinds of payments. You can see here there's guides and really we're going to follow the guide for the one that's most applicable to what we want to do, which in this case is just handle a once off payment. And it's going to be an online payment. So meaning they have to use their credit card online. We're not sending them an invoice. They have to be on the website and actually enter their card details there. So you can see there's online payments in person, subscriptions, invoices. We're dealing with online payments. So you can click on that. And there's different ways that you can implement it. You can just go to accept online payments, which is straight out the gate, handle payments. And then if you want to do more technical things and you have some custom 
sort of functionality you're looking for. You can save a card during the payment. You can set up payments for f future dates. So we're going to go with accept online payments. It's the simplest thing to do. And there's two ways you can go about this guide. The first is with a pre-built checkout page. And the second is a custom payment flow. So the first one is using Stripe checkout. And we're going to do that one first because it's very simple to do. And once we're done with that, we can then show how to do a custom payment flow. So you'll see here on the front end, I have HTML selected and on the back end, I have Python selected. So make sure you've got both of those selected and that'll just make sure the documentation is correct. So the first thing we have to do is we have to install Stripe, which is the Python package. So we're gonna make sure we do that. We're gonna stop the server here and I'm gonna run pip install Stripe. We're also gonna to want to store that in our requirements.txt. So I'm gonna say pip freeze into our requirements.txt. And once we have that, we then scroll down to creating a checkout session. So what this is, is basically a unique session for when the user is paying. So you saw on the tutorial hub, when I click the button, there was a little loader. And what happens is it's sending a request to the back end. It's creating a unique checkout session using this exact call here. And that returns a URL, which you then get redirected to. But let's just take this one step at a time. First, we're going to basically do everything here. This is a Stripe example. So we're gonna to have to modify it for Django. But really, or what we want is we wanna call the Stripe API. So make sure we copy all of that. And we're gonna go into our product views.py and we're gonna create a view that looks very similar to this one here, which is the create checkout session view. So I'm gonna get rid of the render call there and I'm going to import from Django's views, import view. And view is a very generic class-based view that we can use to handle things like post requests and get requests. It's a very simple bare bones view. So what we're gonna do is create a class-based view for this and I'm gonna call it the create checkout session view which inherits from this view we're going to handle the post request which is by using the post method and that just takes in self request args and keyword args and then we're going to go and paste everything that we copied there from the documentation so we need to import the stripe package to actually make use of it so we'll do that here at the top and we also need to configure Stripe using our API keys. So we need to import the Django settings in order to do this. So we're going to do from django.conf import settings. What we then do is we configure the Stripe API key. And this is using your secret key that we defined in the Django settings. So we're going to do settings.stripe secret key. This is very important. Make sure you are using the Stripe secret key and that you have your variables configured in your Django settings.py file. Right, so then we can come down here and we can take a look at what's happening. So we're storing this Stripe API call in a variable called checkout session. And there's a couple arguments passed in here. You can see payment method types, which is card. So that basically is what it says it is. We're allowing the payment methods to include card payments. And then we have line items and line items are the items that are actually being purchased. So every item is a dictionary or an object that has some properties like price data and quantity. Quite simply, it's just one. We're buying one of this product. And the price data contains the currency, USD, the unit amount, which is in cents again. So this is 2,000 cents, but actually $20. And then you have product data, which has the name. In this case, there's the name and then some images. And the images is a list of publicly available images that can be loaded during the Stripe checkout. Now, because I don't have any product images, I'm actually gonna get rid of this from the product data. That just means that there won't be an images show in the Stripe checkout. But if you do have some images that are publicly available, then do go and add them in here. And then you can just have the product name. And you can see that this already, in terms of the line items, is exactly what we've modeled in the product model. We have the name and the price. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to fetch our specific product model here and then pass in that product's price and name. But just continuing, we can see the mode is payment and then we have a success URL and a cancel URL. The success URL is the 
URL on your domain that you get redirected to once the payment is successful. And then likewise, the cancel URL is the URL you get redirected to once the payment was canceled. So your domain is in this case a variable. So I'm gonna just make use of it. And I'm gonna say that it's our local host because we're not gonna be deploying this to a live site. So getting redirected back to our local host is fine. And I'm going to remove the .html from here and we'll just make use of slash success and slash cancel. Okay. We're gonna to need to create two Django views to handle this as well. But for now, what we're gonna do is return our checkout session ID in a JSON response. So the JSON response is, if you think of like an API, it returns JSON data, which is all we need from this view. We don't need to return HTML or an actual template. We just want to return one piece of data. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say from django.htdp import the JSON response and all the way at the bottom, we're gonna return a JSON response and that takes in an object or a dictionary. And in this dictionary, we're gonna return exactly what the Stripe documentation returns here, which is the ID and that is the checkout session ID. So go ahead and copy that as well. And we're gonna paste that in there. All right, so ID is the key, checkout session is our variable here and we're grabbing the ID from that. This is important because we're gonna use this ID on the front end side of things. So in our JavaScript and Stripe's JavaScript module will make use of this ID and use it to redirect us to our unique Stripe checkout session. Okay, so we have our view here. It's basically complete. We just need to bring it into the URLs. So I'm gonna do this in the root URL configuration and I'll just remove that comment. And I'm gonna say from our products dot views, import create checkout session view. And this path is going to be create checkout session. It's gonna use that view and we're gonna do dot as view because it's a class-based view. And we'll say the name is create checkout session. And now that we have this URL here, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go into our settings.py and I'm gonna come here to our templates. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a directory that we're gonna to use to hold some of our templates. Now, because this is one of the later versions of Django, we have the path module. So what we can do is we can add our base slash templates like that. And then what we can do is we can create a templates directory here and inside there, I'm gonna create a file which we'll call our landing.html, let's say. So this is gonna be our landing page. And what we're gonna do is just put some basic HTML in here that just says that this is the best product ever and you should really buy it. And this is the price, this is what, it, what all the features are. So all of those sort of details. So we'll say, here is our product. We'll say, buy now just something for now. And inside our products, we'll create another view here, which is gonna be a template view, a very simple view. And it's just going to render out that template we just created. So this is gonna be our product landing page view. And this is going to be a template view. So what we can do is we'll say from Django.views.generic, import the template view. Right, so this is gonna inherit from that template view and all we have to do is just specify the template name, which is gonna be our landing.html. We can then bring this into our URLs here, just as we did with the previous one. And here we'll create a path to the base path. So basically just empty string like that. It's gonna use our product landing view dot as view and we can say name is let's say landing page. All right, so what that means is now if we come back over here and we go to refresh, then we have our product displaying over here. And we can now continue with the tutorial here, which is to now go onto the front end side of things. So I'm gonna come scroll down a little bit here to 
our add and order preview page, right? So this is where we actually display the product and you could pretty much go and copy everything inside this little checkout.html here. And we can put that inside our template that we created. So you can paste that there. And we're gonna focus mainly on the JavaScript side of things, but you can see here, there's just some generic HTML with a buy button and all of the product information displayed over there. Now, this is hard coded. So if this is how you would wanna do it and you're only gonna sell one product, then that's fine. But we want to make it a little bit more dynamic, which we'll handle soon. But we want to take a look at the JavaScript side of things. So first they load Stripe.js, which is in the head of the document. So that just brings Stripe into the document. You then add a checkout button. So that button is what Stripe is gonna look for. If you press this button, it's then gonna trigger an event listener that will send a request to the backend. So you can see it's a post request and it's going to our create checkout session view returns the JSON response and then calls the stripe.redirect to checkout, which is a Stripe function. And all it does is take in the session ID and that comes from our Django view, which has got the session ID in it. And at this point, you'll be redirected to that form where you submit all your credit card information and actually buy that product. So that's what all of this does, initialize Stripe, fetch the checkout session, redirect to Stripe, and that's it, all right? So that's the end of the tutorial. You have some test cards that we can use as well. But now onto the Django side of things, there's a couple of things we need to do to make this a bit better. First, we're hard coding the public Stripe key here, whereas what we can do is we can add some context into this template. So we can just define the get context data method, and that is so we can update the context. So I'm gonna call context equal to super of our product landing page view and we're going to return that context at the end of this view but in between that we're going to update the context because it's a dictionary and we can pass in the stripe public key which is going to come from our settings and it's going to be the stripe public key so what that allows us to do is inside the template here we can replace this with a context variable, which is our Stripe public key. Cool, so that's the first major improvement. The second is the actual product information here. So again, if you have a product image, then you can display it, but I'm gonna remove it from the document. And inside here, we're going to want to display the actual product name and product price. So going back to our view here, we actually want to fetch the product that we're dealing with. So to fetch the product, we need to first import that product. So we're gonna say from our models, import the product model. And then here, we're gonna say that our product equals product.objects.get. And we could do where the name equals to some sort of hard-coded name. So let's say we know that our product is called test product. So we're gonna fetch the product here and we're gonna pass this product into the context and what that lets us do is inside the template, we can then access the product name here. So we can do product.name and we can then do the product price here. Now, do keep in mind that the price is in dollars, it's not in cents. So we're gonna need to display the actual dollar price. We don't wanna display it in cents. So what I'm going to do is define a method called get display price. And we will add that to our product model so we'll say define get display price. And all we're going to do is return a string, which we will format with self.price divide by 100. So that will basically return it in the dollar value. And in here, we're going to pass in a little bit of some magic here, which basically rounds it to two decimals. So that sort of string format says return with two decimals behind it. So all of that's running. If we come back over here to our product, we can refresh, but we don't have an existing product with that name. So we're gonna go into the admin and we're gonna log in and create our product. So this was called the test product. Let's say the price is a thousand. 
Then if we come back to our landing page, we can see our test product displaying here and the actual display price in dollars. The last piece to add here to finish this off is if we go back to the views, we want our checkout session to actually have to do with the price and the product that we're checking out. So right now, if we go to our view in the, or rather the URL, the checkout session doesn't have any way of being distinguished between what product is actually being checked out. So what we can do is we can add a primary key here as a unique identifier for what product we're actually purchasing. So what that means is inside this view, we now have access to some keyword args here. So we can say that the product ID equals to self.keyword args of the primary key. And we can then fetch that product using product.objects.get where the ID equals to the product ID. And now we actually have that specific product. So over here, we can say product.price and over here, we can say product.name. So now we're actually dealing with the specific product instead of just some hard-coded data. And we just need to make sure that when we send the request to this view that we pass in the primary key. So if we go back to this landing.html here in the JavaScript, we're fetching this URL, which is also hard-coded. So we could actually replace this with a Django URL. And inside that URL, we're going to pass create checkout session and we're going to pass the product ID as the required argument for that view. And we do have the product in the context. So that lets us pass that in like that. Now, something to be aware of is that whenever you send a post request, you need to make sure you pass in the CSRF token. So one very quick way to do this is actually to pass in CSRF token inside the template like this. And then I'm just going to paste this coming from the Django documentation, which basically does a query selector where the name equals CSRF middleware token. And we grab the value from that, which is stored in this CSRF token. And we then just have to add some headers into our fetch request here. And the header we're going to add is the X CSRF in capitals and then token and that CSRF token value stored inside the headers like that. So that will allow us to send a post request because we now have the CSRF token. So if we go back to our view, we can actually print out the product to make sure that we are getting all the correct information. And just before testing it, I just want to make sure we have the success and cancel URLs set up. So in order to do that, we need to create two more templates success.html and we'll just say success and then the last one is cancel.html which is cancelled okay so then we can use those two templates as views so inside here i'm going to create another template view which is going to be our success view and it's going to be another template view template name is success.html and then we can just duplicate that and create cancel view, which is going to be cancel.html. And we can then bring both of these into the URLs here. So we'll then create two paths. The first one is going to be to cancel, which is the correct path. And we're going to use cancel view dot as view name is cancel and then create another one which is going to be success and that's going to use the success view and just make sure there's some commas there cool so we've got the views set up and that means that our create checkout session view should be ready to test so coming back over here i'm going to refresh this and i'm going to inspect the page and bring up the console and I'm going to click the checkout button there and we can see we get redirected. Here's our Stripe checkout view test product. Again, there's the price of the product, which is correct. So we can enter a test email here, pass in dummy credit card information, hit pay. And now we just wait to get redirected 
to the success URL. And there we go. All right, so we can see we're redirected to slash success. There's the success there. So we know that it was successful and we can always come back here to our payments to see that the payment actually came through. And there we can see it, $10, there's a customer email. So we know that it was a successful payment, but now we actually need to give access for what they just paid, right? So the easiest way to do this is just to send them an email. And because we're selling a digital product, that normally means sending them either the URL to the product or the actual product itself, which is a, an ebook or some sort of file. If it was a file that you wanted to keep secure on the actual ac application and make it that they have to log in to download, then I'd recommend checking out the Gumroad course because in that we set up the application so that you have to log in and you have to download the content from there. But in this case, what we can do is actually just send an email. Now, what we need to do is we need to listen for Stripe webhooks. Now, a webhook is basically an event that is sent to you from whatever origin. So in this case, it is Stripe that is sending us these events. And we treat these events as basically a way to prove that something has happened. So in this case, we need to receive an event from Stripe that tells us that the payment was successful, right? So once we receive that event, we then know that the payment was successful and we can then give access to that specific product. We can't trust that landing on slash success means that they actually paid because again, I can just refresh here and I'm on the slash success. So we need those events. Now, coming back here to the documentation in this checkout page, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see the section after the payment and fulfillment is the first link. If you click on this, it's gonna open up a new page of the documentation, which is to fulfill your orders. And this has to do with webhooks. So it says here, now when a customer pays, you need notification that you can fulfill their order. So you're gonna learn how to receive an event notification when the customer pays you. You're gonna learn how to handle the event. You're gonna use the Stripe CLI to quickly test the event handler. And you can then optionally handle additional payment methods and turn on your event handler in production. But we're not gonna do this in production. We're just gonna get this working locally. So first you're gonna to need to install the Stripe CLI. So if you don't have it installed, you can go through the install guide and basically it allows you to run some commands as if you were calling the API. So you can then do this in the terminal. So you, if you are on a Mac, you can use Homebrew or if you're on any other operating system, if you're on Windows or Linux, you can use any of these to install the Stripe CLI. And then once you have it, you can then just log into Stripe and it's very easy to log in. You'll just get a pairing code and you'll then be prompted to enter that code in the browser and it'll then just magically connect. And you can then run commands using the Stripe CLI. So for example, you can run Stripe customers create. And there's a whole bunch of things, but what we're mainly gonna use it for is to listen to webhook events. So back here in this guide, once you have the Stripe CLI installed, you can then run Stripe status to see if all the services are online. So coming back here, I'm going to open up another terminal and I'm gonna run that command. So Stripe status. So it says here, a new version of the Stripe CLI is available. In my case, if you do have the latest version, you won't get this, but I'm not gonna upgrade right now. It does tell me all services are online. And with that, we can then continue to use the Stripe CLI to listen for these webhook events. So just continuing here in the documentation, you first have to create your event handler. So this is gonna be a view, a Django view, that will actually handle the events when Stripe sends them to us. So we're gonna just copy this example, and it does say it's using Django, this example. And if I just close this, I'm gonna do it right here in our product views and we can just move this import here to the top. So it's actually from here, HTTP response, right? So CSRF exempt is something we can actually import. It's not here in the example, but you can import it from the top. You go from django.views.decorators.csrf import CSRF exempt, right? So we basically use CSRF exempt to make the view not require a CSRF token 
And that is important because whenever a post request is sent, we need to use a CSRF token to verify the post request. But because it's coming from Stripe, we will not be receiving a CSRF token. So we just make it exempt. But we are gonna add some security settings here to verify the webhook. So what happens is here, you can see we have the payload, which is the request body. And this is gonna contain most of the information about the webhook. And at the end, we return an HTTP response with the status being 200, so that Stripe knows we received the event. So I'm gonna rename this to be called Stripe Webhook. And if we come back here, we run the CLI here with Stripe listen, and it says dash dash forward to localhost, and then in this case, it's 4242, but we're gonna do it port 8000. And then it's slash webhook, but we're gonna create our own URL to handle this view. So let's take this view, bring it into the URLs, I'm gonna import it here, and I'm gonna create a path, which is gonna be to, let's do webhooks slash stripe. We're gonna use the stripe webhook, and we can say name is stripe webhook. We then take this, I'm gonna open up the terminal, and we run stripe listen forward to localhost 8000 slash stripe webhooks or how it is here webhooks slash stripe so stripe listen dash dash forward to localhost port 8000 slash and just paste that in there cool i'm going to run that you'll see that it then outputs this your webhook signing secret is this value here you're gonna to want to take that value and make sure you've got it in your settings.py as the Stripe webhook secret, as that's what we're gonna to use to verify that the events come from Stripe. All right, so you can see already, there's a whole bunch of events that are being sent, and this is from other projects, not necessarily from what we're doing right now, but we will start receiving events about what we're doing in a second. So we need to go through the checkout as a customer and we should then receive the checkout session completed event, which is what Stripe sends whenever you go through the checkout, right? So coming back here, I'm going to go through the checkout again. And so I'm just gonna run through this, right? We get redirected because it's a success again. And there you'll see checkout.session.completed. And so we're gonna try and listen for that specific event and when we do receive this event, we'll then look at all the information that comes with it and give access to the user and based on the product and all these different things. So I'm gonna go back here. And first we need to verify the events come from Stripe. So there's a couple things we need to do inside this function. So I'm gonna copy all of that. I'm just gonna close this and I'm going to paste all of that there. All right, so there's some try statements. We have the payload, the signature header, which is basically a header in the request that comes from Stripe. And we need the signature header as well as the payload and our endpoint secret, which is actually the Stripe webhook secret that we have in our settings.py file. So we can do settings.stripe webhook secret. All right. We then store the event as this event variable. And we have two accept calls here. First, if it's a value error, which means that it's an invalid payload, right? So the actual data from the payload is not valid. In that case, we return a 400 status code. And then another exception is if the verification of the signature fails. So in that case, it's not a valid signature. And we also return a 400 status code. Other than that, if both of these are okay, then we will have the event which we can use going forward. So coming back here, after we fulfill the order here, we handle the checkout.session.completed event, which is this whole bit here. So you'll see there's an if statement, checking if the event type is checkout.session.completed. And based on that, we then grab all of the information from that. So. I'm going to paste all of that here and just tab it in. So if the event type is checkout session completed, we then have this object that we can look at. So I'm just gonna go and print the session 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to test the event again. So going through here, we're going to go through the checkout process again, and we should then receive an event, which we can then look at the contents of. Right, we have a success. We come back here and I'm going to go to our Python server and we should see the event being printed out. And this is the event, right? So, the, or the session rather, as we've printed it out here. So the session contains a whole bunch of stuff. We have the customer, which is the Stripe customer, the customer details. We have the payment method types. We have the amount that was actually paid. We have the success URL, all the details of this event, as well as the total here, you can see a thousand. So we know that it has been paid now. So all we have to do is grab the email from the customer details and give access to this specific product. But as you can see, there isn't much information on the specific product. How do we know which Django product was purchased based on the event here? So what we do is we use the metadata property to pass in some specific information that we want to pass through. So we do that inside our session create method here. So what I'm gonna do is pass in metadata. And this is a Python dictionary. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass in the product ID and the product ID is going to be our Django product ID. So what that helps us with is back here in the event inside our metadata, we will then have the product ID inside this dictionary, which we can then access inside the webhook. And thus we now have the customer's email and the product ID. So we can then give access to that specific product to the specific user that just checked out. So what we're gonna do is we're going to first grab the customer email and then we're gonna grab the product ID. So grabbing the customer email is gonna come from the customer details and then email. So that's gonna be session customer details and then their email and the product ID is gonna come from the metadata and then the product ID right, which we can see would come from there. So once we have the customer email, we can then send them an email, which we can do using the send mail function, which comes from Django. So you can do this by just doing from django.core.mail import send mail, and you can then send an email. And we just pass in a couple arguments. We'll say the subject is, here is your product. We'll say the message is, thanks for your purchase. Here is the product you ordered. We'll then have the recipient list being one email, which is the customer email. And then the from email is actually just gonna be a made up email. You can just do anything really. And that's because we're not gonna be sending real emails. So the way that we do that is in the settings.py, we basically just add a setting here, which is the email backend. And we can specify to use the console backend, which basically means that emails will be printed in the console instead of actually sent out as real emails. So we just specify here django.core.mail.backends.console.email backend. All right, so that will then send emails in the console and we can then grab the specific product by saying product equals to product dot objects dot get ID equals to the product ID. And you can then decide how you want to do this. Do you want to send the actual file attached to the product here in the email? So meaning we could add like a, a file field. So we could say the actual file is a models.file field and we can say upload to let's say product files right so you can decide do you want it to be an actual an email every single time with the file and that file contains whether it's a video or a pdf or an ebook or whatever the actual file is or you could have the url so you could say this is a url field and this is literally the URL to the Notion document or the Airtable database, whatever the URL is for the digital product. And you can then just 
send that inside the email. So it's up to you at this point. I'm not going to handle it specifically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it to do, which is basically going to be decide whether you want to send the file or the URL. I'm going to do the URL because it's a little bit easier. The file you could always attach to the send mail function, but again, it's up to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this an F string in the message and I'll just say the URL is and then just output it with product URL. Okay. And so I just need to make migrations then. So I'm going to run manage.py, make migrations. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to go back to the product model here and I'm going to make this blank and null. And then the URL, I'll also, no, I'll actually make, make this required. So coming back here, make migrations. All right, the default value for the product, I'm going to specify as Google. So just google.com. And I forgot the, the apostrophe there. All right, so made the migration. Now migrate that. Cool. So every product has a URL, and that URL in this case is google.com. So what that means is when you receive the email here, it's going to say the URL is google.com. There you go. You now have access to the content. But again, this could be the Airtable database, the Notion document, the anything you want to sell that is a private URL, that will be the product URL here. This is just one way to do it. You can decide how you want to handle it, whether it's a file or some other kind of product. But the main point here is to get the Stripe payments working. So at this point, that's all we really need to do. We have the product, we have the customer, we send the customer access to the product, and that's it. So let's go and try this out again. I'm going to run the Django server here. And we do have the Stripe CLI running here. So we're going to run through the checkout again. And we should see that we get an email in the console when we're done. I'm going to use the email testing one, two, three at gmail.com just so that we can see that being printed out in the console. Right, successfully redirected. And there we can see the email, right? So thanks for your purchase. Here's the product you ordered and we can see who it's being sent from, which is mattertest.com. And then we have the two email, which is the email I just checked out with. So you can see now we're sending an email to that user after they purchased. And we should see the event here, checkout session completed from Stripe CLI. So now we have the webhooks working. This is how to implement webhooks. And that's how to use Stripe checkout as a way to handle payments. So really what we have working at this point is exactly how the checkout works for buying the Django tutorial hub. The only upgrade that you can go from here is if we come back to this tutorial here is to do a custom payment flow. And so that means actually building the card form yourself. So you can see here into the card number, your expiration date and the CVC and actually building the form, right? This is the custom flow. So first we have to install the Stripe package. We've already done that, so that's fine. We then go on to create a payment intent. This is something new. This is what we need to do every time we actually want a person to go through using their credit card details. And the payment intent, as you can see, it says here, tracks the customer's payment life cycle. So it keeps track of failed payment attempts and ensuring the customer is only charged once. So we have to return what's called the client secret. And this is something part of the intent object. So we create the object on the server, right? By calling the Stripe API, Stripe payment intent dot create. And in this case, you can see it's as simple as just passing in the amount and the currency. That then returns an object and we use the client secret on the front end side with JavaScript to continue with it. Let's go and grab all of this and we're gonna go and create a Django view that does exactly that. So we'll do this and we're gonna create a class-based view. It's gonna be the Stripe intent view. It's going to inherit from the view and we're gonna handle 
post requests. So self request args and keyword args. And we're going to paste all of the stuff here, right? So just get rid of what's not necessary. In this case, what's happening is it's loading the request data inside a JSON uh, loads function. But what we're going to do is use the URL instead of using JSON data. So it, all that's happening is it's calling this function calculate order amounts, which is based on the items. We're only going to be doing one item, which is the product. So I'm going to copy the product here. And we're going to get the product via the product ID, which again comes from the URL. So if we take a look at this view here, it comes from self.keywordargs and we grab the primary key like that. We don't need to create a data object and like that, we can then just do product.price in the amount. The currency is USD and we're going to return a JSON response that has the client secret which comes from this intent object. Otherwise, we will return a JSON object that has this error key, which is going to be the string of the error. Right, so like this, we can bring this into the URLs. So I'm going to import this over here. And this is going to be a path to create payment intent. We're going to use stripe intent view dot as view and the name will be create payment intent. We need to just remember to add the primary key in the URL like that. And so coming back here to the documentation, we load the stripe JS in the head, which we're already doing. We then define the payment form, which you can see here. I'm going to copy this form. And we're going to go into the template here for landing.html. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And underneath the product, above the, or actually below the checkout button, I'll do this. All right, and then we'll say checkout using custom payment flow. All right, so we have a form here. I'm just going to tab all of this in. There's this div with an ID of card element, which is very useful for Stripe to load the card elements inside of. You can see there's a submit button and there's a paragraph tag for card errors and a result message as well. And some of this is just done from the global CSS file. So you really could just copy everything from this CSS file and add it as CSS. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put it inside a style tag for now because to set up static files would be away from the point of this tutorial. So you can see there's all the style inside the style tag. And if I come back and refresh the page, if I just come back here, you can see this is what it looks like, right? So you have the checkout button, which is from our Stripe checkout, and then you have the actual custom payment flow. So coming back here, if we go to our checkout HTML, all right, so we define the form, we initialize Stripe, which we're already doing. We then fetch a payment intent. So you can see here, we run this query selector. It says that the button becomes disabled and we then create the payment intent, which is by sending a post request to the back end. And in this case, they're submitting the body, but we're not going to do that. And once you get a response from the server, you'll then have the client secret, which you can then use in the result of this callback function. And you'll see it then goes on to the next step where it creates Stripe elements, which creates this card element. And then that gets mounted into the div with an ID of card element. And there's a whole bunch of JavaScript stuff here. So you have a form event listener for the submit button, which then calls this pay with card function. And that takes in all of these arguments, which then calls a Stripe API endpoint, which is to confirm the card payment using the client secret and some configuration here that says the payment method is the card, which is using all the card information you just entered. And then there's some UI helpers and some other stuff here as well. 
but I'm gonna go and copy all of it actually because it just helps to complete everything. So we're gonna copy basically all of the stuff. All right, come back here, scroll all the way down and I'm gonna do this underneath the checkout button here. So just paste this all there. All right, so I'm just gonna have to tab some things in here. So this is where our things start. This checkout button is using Stripe Checkout, so we're not interested in that. But all of this stuff here, I'm just gonna tab that in. All right, so we don't need to look at the UI helpers because basically that just helps with animating the error and the loading button. So we're not gonna look at that. And then we have the pay with card function, which is called here using the client secret. If we scroll up here, we do need to add something into the headers which if you remember is the CSRF token. So make sure to grab that and paste it inside the headers like this. I'm gonna change this from being hard coded into a Django URL. So I'm gonna do URL and it's gonna be create payment intent. And it needs to take in the product ID as an argument for the URL and we don't need this purchase anymore. So the body of the request here doesn't need to be passed in. We can actually get rid of it. So get rid of that. Right, so that looks to be everything we need to do. So the server is running. We can come and try this out to refresh here and just check the form out, right? So you can see the form is loading. If I put the cursor, you can see into the card number, right? So I'll do that and we can just inspect to make sure we don't get any kind of errors. So I'll do that, hit pay, you'll see the little loader. So this is now creating the payment intent that gets redirected here. And we then get this message here, payment succeeded, see the result in your Stripe dashboard, which if I just refresh here, we can see the payment show up here, but there's something missing and that is the customer email. So if we come back here, all of this is actually done. We've styled the form and all of that is fine. What we're most interested in is actually adding more information about the customer, which we're not doing right now. We're just passing in the credit card number. And so that's what we wanna do here by enabling this toggle to send an email receipt. So that requires that we collect a customer's email address. And that just brings in this extra input field here. So you can see there it is inside the form. I'm basically gonna copy exactly that and we're gonna go into the form and we're gonna add it just like that. All right, so above the card element div and immediately if we refresh the page here, you can see there's the email address inside the form and coming back here to the documentation, you then need to provide the email address inside this confirm card payment method, right? So that's in the JavaScript side of things. You need to pass in the recipient or receipt email. But now instead of passing this in as a receipt email, what we want to do is make sure that the email is used to create the customer. So the easiest way to do this is actually to make a little bit of a custom payment flow in terms of what happens here in the landing page and in the view. So Back here in the landing page, what's happening is we are creating a payment intent once the page loads, right? So we're calling this fetch API call immediately once the page loads. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change it so that only once we click the button, which is on the form add event listener, that it actually calls the fetch command and that in turn will call the back end, which creates the payment intent. So in doing that, how that helps us is that then we can actually access the email from the form and pass that email here into the data so that we can create a Stripe customer and attach that customer to the payment intent. So how this is gonna look is if we come back here, what we're gonna do is if we just look at this fetch call, we can see here that inside the dot then function, you have an elements a card element created and the form, we're gonna cut all of that out and we're going to paste it basically right above the fetch command, right? So we can see here's the elements, 
here's the style and the card. I'm just going to tab this in a little bit. And what we want to do is here on the submit event listener, when we call this pay with card, instead of that being called there, we're going to call it back inside the dot then function. And we're going to move the entire fetch call in here. So that means now we listen for when the form is submitted to then create the payment intent, which then will return all the JSON data, which is passed into the pay with card call, which then takes in everything and continues as usual. What that allows us to do then is here we can pass in a body and inside that body, we're going to pass in the email that comes from the form. So we can do json.stringify. We're going to pass in the email and that email value is going to be the email from the form, which is this here. So immediately what we can do is we can come in here and we can actually print the request body to actually see what that looks like. And then if we come back to this over here and we just put in a dummy email, test at test.com. We're not trying to do the payments. We're just trying to get the email in the back end and just fix that up. Right. And actually, I don't think I refreshed. So let me refresh the page here and just make sure that we are actually submitting the, the with the new JavaScript that we just wrote. All right. If I hit pay, then we come back over here and we can see here is the body. You can see email and test at test.com. What we can then do is using that body, we can load that into JSON. So we can call this the, let's say, request JSON, let's say, and we're going to call JSON.loads the request body. So we need to import JSON to actually handle that. So import JSON. Let's come back down here. And what I'm going to do is print out the request JSON and do it again, right? I can actually resubmit this entire thing and we should see there's the email, right? Now this is actually a JSON object that's been loaded. So we can access the email from here. If I print out the email now instead and I come back and hit pay, we should see test at test.com. Right, so now you can see this is how we got the email and using that email, we can then create the Stripe customer. So we can say customer equals to stripe.customer.create and we just pass in the email, which is going to be this request JSON email value. So this is now a Stripe customer, which we can then attach to the payment intent. And that payment intent will now have the email, which we then can access in the webhook. So to pass in the customer, we can simply pass in customer like this, which is the customer ID. So we can access the ID like this and we can actually print the customer for you to just see what that object looks like. So if we come back here, hit pay, and we just wait for the request, right? Here's the object and the object has a bunch of stuff on it. So if we scroll up just a little bit there, you can see is the ID, which is this customer. And so with that customer being passed in into the payment intent, which then in turn gets used in the front end, we then get a webhook which contains the customer email. So let's go to the, the webhook here and let's actually print out the session. Okay. I'm going to just clear the terminal out a little bit and I'm going to refresh here as well. And I'm going to use something different. Let's say something else at test.com. Right. So we should see this email being printed out now goes through all the necessary stuff, creates the payment intent. We can see here there's something else at test.com. But now our webhook is actually slightly different. So if we go back to the Stripe here, you can actually see we're not getting that checkout succeeded anymore because we're not going through Stripe checkout. Now we are going through just a normal payment intent. So you can see here we're getting a bunch of different charges. We're getting customer created, which is good payment intent created, payment intent succeeded, and the charge succeeded as well. So a bunch of different events getting called. We're most interested in the payment intent succeeded event. So if we go here to the event 
listener here in the webhook, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say else if the event type equals to payment intent succeeded, I'm then going to say the intent equals to event data object. And I'm going to print the intent out as well so that we can see the intent, but it's actually going to be pretty similar not the actual object, but in terms of what we do, is gonna be pretty similar here for the intent as well. So let's just open up the Python server here again. I'm gonna hit pay, even for the same email though, and we should see the webhook be printed. So let me refresh the server, come back here and hit pay, and we just listen for the events, right? Here we can see that event get printed so if we just scroll up a little bit there's a whole bunch of stuff included in a payment intent and you can see here right so there's the amount we then have the different charges right so we can see all the charges on there but we're most interested in if we just come a little bit down we have the customer and using this customer we are going to fetch the customer details from the stripe api which will include the email and using that email, we can then send the user access to that content. So what this looks like is over here, we're gonna say this is the, let's say Stripe customer equals to the intent. And we're gonna grab the customer from that. And that is on the object. It's a little bit nested, but it is there. So with that, we can then say, we'll actually do this, we'll say Stripe customer ID, and we can say the Stripe customer equals stripe.customer.retrieve the Stripe customer ID, right? And using that, we can then access the email from there. So we're gonna say the customer email equals to Stripe customer email. And the rest of it looks very, very similar. So we send an email with the customer's email here, but we again need to get access to the product via some sort of metadata. So we can do this again in the exact same way as we do with the session call by doing this inside the payment intent. So here we will add some metadata, which will again contain the product ID, and this is gonna be the product ID, which you can either get from the URL or you could access product.id. Either is fine. So now you're passing in the metadata, which then allows us to grab the product ID from the metadata as well. So just tabbing this in, we have the intent, which we can then grab the metadata product ID from. We can then grab the product and send the email in the exact same way as we were doing in the other event. And so like this, let's try and test this out again. I know we've gone through quite a lot, but to get this to work, you do have to customize quite a lot of things. So we've got the email here. If I hit pay, it's gonna create a customer with this email. It'll then send us the payment intent webhook, which will contain some metadata and the customer's email. So hitting pay, we just wait for some events now. Right, there we go, we can see an email being printed out, so the URL is there. And that kind of means that everything worked, but we can just double check to see that the customer is here and the metadata is here. So you've got product ID being passed in there. And like this, you can start sending access to some digital products and you can just build a very basic product landing page where you can sell any kind of digital product, whether it's an ebook, video, set of files or URL to some sort of product. And very, very easily you can use Django to handle everything from creating the product data, storing it on a site and selling that product and doing any kind of customized post-processing for once the payment has completed. So you can see it's not really a lot of code. You've got a couple of views to just handle the event coming from Stripe. And from there, you can then do whatever you want. You can send an email, you can send an event to some other kind of API to trigger some other processes. You can do all sorts of things. And this is just kind of scraping the surface. 
If you've gotten any kind of value out of this video, please consider liking the video again. It does help push this channel forward. And if you wanna see more like this, then do check out learn.justjanga.com where we take this concept even further and show how we can pay multiple creators on the site. And other than that, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.